So to support the ankle at the same time, it will allow for torso flexion. So this is the one very widely used nowadays. It's called torsionic leg. It's very well accepted, very light in weight, very much light. Okay. That is for the wrist cramps and toe parts amputation. The next level science amputation. We are using that the foot. So the foot function has to be replaced. The basic functions of the foot are transmission of body load, shock absorption, and the mid tarsal and ankle motion. So the, to accomplish all these functions, various foot components have been developed. They are broadly classified into two groups. One is articulated foot. The name is articulated at the level of the ankle joint. The other variety is non-articulated. So among the articulated foot, one the very old conventional one is this one. Single axis articulated foot. This consists of a metallic ankle joint which can provide 15 degrees of plantar flexion and 5 degrees of torsion flexion. <coughs> to assist this movement in a smooth coordinated way, there are two bumpers, upper bumpers, called the plantar flexion bumper and this is the torsion flexion bumper. Those two to give a smooth coordinated movement of the ankle joint which gives 15 degrees of plantar flexion and 5 degrees of dash flexion. No inverse and reversion is possible. So that the name itself is not single axis. Only possible movement is only one plane. And further, the core foot it can go into high flexion because there is a microcellular upper formation is there, it leads to high flexion for the toes. So though it gives plantar flexion and dash flexion at the ankle joint level. Does not provide inverse reverse. So, uneven terrain is very, very uncomfortable. And the entire foot is made up of willow, willow, the one in uh, cricket bat. Okay. Why it is used in cricket bat? Lightweight. One is light in weight. So, strength. So, shock absorption. That wood has got a superior quality of shock absorption. When it is hitting a bat, or the hard ball is hitting a hundred kilometers per hour, it will produce the shock. The shock 70 to 80 percent will be absorbed by the wood itself. The manual 20 percent will be transmitted to other way. Otherwise, one cannot hold a bag and hit the ball, which is coming around hard ball, 100 kilometers per hour. We can have a big shock. So, the same shock absorption purpose, below it is used in the prosthetic foot fabrication to get the time of heel strike to absorb the shock. The another variety in this multi axial foot to look like the same thing, I think that sample <coughs> that the joint is a more sophisticated, it can give plantar flexion, dash flexion, inverse reversion, and rotation also. It all movements of the ankle joint will provide. But a very sophisticated joint, because of the sophistication, the breakage of the joints is very high. Even in this variety also, the multi axial foot also, breakage of the joint is very high. And the maintenance of the joint is very high because in tubos it may give wear and tear, unwanted noise. The noise can be prevented by putting oil, but oil stains the curve. So these are all the some of the disadvantages of this earliest design of single axis and multi axis. So then the researcher thought, why not to eliminate the ankle joint and replace the ankle joint function by some other means? That lead to various design development of non-articulated foot variety. So among the non-articulated foot variety, the one very widely used foot technology is the SATS foot. Solid ankle cushion heel foot. So this consists of a very solid wood, which is called a keel wood, which is in the shape of a rocker shape, extends up to the neck of the metatarsal. Inside the U, rigidity to the foot. So, underneath, there is a canvas palata, the one, the very tough fabric used in the conveyor belt at all, to do a very good strength. That is to, additionally, strength is given by the canvas palata. And this is having a cushion here posteriorly to absorb the shock <coughs> and to give an associated front of okay. Then the entire foot is covered with a resilient rubber, a flexible rubber. In one technique, it's a bonded with a piece of rubber bonded together in this. Here, it's a molded design. This is also a satch foot. Internal keel is there. Externally, instead of bonded pieces of rubber here, it is a molded 
or you think foam. The idea is to make it more light surface. Yeah. So what function it gives? There is no movement at the level of the ankle joint. The game itself is not solid ankle cushion here. Solid ankle, <coughs> no movement at the level of the ankle. Then how the ankle joint movement is replaced? That is by the heel cushion compression. At the time of heel strike, after a soft heel it compresses and simulated plant flexion. The movement which is similar to the plant flexion arises due to the heel cushion compression. It comes to the foot flat. Furthermore, low transmission will lead to hyperaction from the toes because <coughs> except the, up to the neck of the metaphorical, they are all resilient, rubber. So that will give a smooth hyperaction from the toes in one plane. Similar to front of flexion and hyperaction of the toes in one plane. And the front of plane, the whole heel portion is made up of rubber. Unlike this, it's a wood. Okay. So this rubber, the lateral pressure and medial pressure will lead to some amount of inversion, inversion is possible. That is why some people will call it as a dual axis switch. But moment in front of flexion, similar to front of flexion and hyperaction of the toes and a slight amount of inverse reversion. Yeah. <coughs> this is the one very versatile, food, very simple, cheap, dynamic in action, long lasting, breakers are very very less long lasting. Okay. Very various sizes are available to suit a different individual. Even the heel cushion is available in three four grades, depending on so the different weight of the patient. For medium KFT patients are available. The only disadvantage is this <coughs> the heel cushion compression. If the patient at the time of heel strike, if we did not transfer adequate weight at the time of heel strike, so what will happen? This will not compress adequately. So, due to that, the foot may rotate medially or laterally, or it may give a sudden foot flight. That is in the initial stage. So if you train the empathy to transfer adequately float at the time of heel strike, that problem also can be overcome. The rotation it may lead to a torsional force over the proximal stop. Yeah. This is the early problem of the satchel. Otherwise, it's a very versatile, very commonly used technology. Okay. So this is light in weight when compared to this product. So to make it still lighter, the polyurethane foam technique is used to make it more lighter. Everything is very light when compared to this, about 30 to 40 percent reduction in weight. <coughs> this is also a polyurethane form, but different material is used. Now, from this, in 1980s, when this forefoot can flex and give the stability by the stack at cushion uh, D, if we can provide a flexible key, the next variety is our. The design and the material used for the key that gives varying degrees of functions in the foot. So instead of a rigid key made up of wood which is there in the center, which will extend up to here, uh, in the next design, the safe foot, stationary ankle and flexible endoskeleton. Okay, that is made up of a flexible material. The flexible material, this does not provide our structure, whereas the, the flexible key that will give a dust flexion also. Apart, it will look like the same thing, but the internal keel makes the difference in the action. Understand? Internal keel makes the difference in the action. That is the second development in a flexible keel understanding. Then the third, when the flexible keel can flex, why not it recoil back? If it recoils like a spring, that will be very, very useful for the athletic countries. Okay. That lead to energy storing foot, stem foot or a stored energy foot. You start from stem, S T E L. That is one technical tell you there are varieties of foot, energy storing foot <coughs> the market now. See instead of a single piece in the such foot, in the safe foot it is made into two pieces, flexible one. Here the third stem foot, energy storing foot, it is made into three pieces. I have drawn a diagram, I wrote on the sample here. It is made into three pieces with the two rubber bullets in between. So, what happened? Just like our um, metatarsal bones, tarsal bones and metatarsal bones, with 
will give us the same structural feeling inside. So it will give the, when the four foot is at the time of field strike, the field pushing compression is same action. And the furthermore, low transmission will lead to the flexibility of more flexibility of the four foot. So when it flexes, because there is all different joints like right? when it flexes the high correction of the toes, the rubber bullets are subjected to pressure. Understand? That there is not small bullets, two bullets. So when it is subjected to pressure, it stores energy. So at the time of push-off period, when the load is released, the rubber bullets will store energy, it releases, recoils back, assisting <coughs> the push-off. A very springier action. The later development by using carbon fiber composites. <coughs> what I have seen in the discovery zone and all, a long spring foot which is going into the shoes. You are able to run fast, a very good action comes. That is all because by using carbon fiber composites. The carbon fiber composite into the foot it is used so that it bends and stores energy and recoil back to their springier action. So in the energy storing food, the varieties of food components are available. It's so all very expensive. Very expensive. But the technology has come, has developed, and then you can use a very good for those things will give a just like a normal human anatomical food function. With the plant reflection, glass reflection, the was not so possible. Although yet very strong because the carbon fiber compounds are very, very light in weight at the same time very strong. Used in the aeroplane technology. That is being used in the food fabrication to make it more light. So why the question of more making more lighter means? See, any, uh, we don't feel the weight of the leaf, though it is about 10 kg weight. We don't because that has to be muscles and bones. But the process is protect externally. Even one gram is accountable. Patient has to lift and then walk. That means energy, energy consumption. If you reduce the process is as light as possible, it is advantageous to the patient. That is why from such foot we go to the lighter material polyurethane foam fifty percent reduction. We go for still carbon fiber, still another fifty percent reduction will come. Very, very light in weight, from more strong. Then coming back to the Indian modifications of the foot. See the look at the bottom of this. It's a shoe shape. So you need a shoe or a footwear to walk along with this. Once you remove the shoes, the alignment will change, you will not be able to walk. In Indian scenario, footwear is not allowed inside the road. Going to the religious places, footwear is not allowed. So the amputee is fitted with the Western technology, wearing a shoe. He is uncomfortable to walk inside the house. He wants to walk barefoot. So for that, at Metras, they have developed a foot called a Metras foot. It is nothing but modification of the satch foot. See the sole. They had an additional rubber and made the sole flat to facilitate barefoot walking. You need not have a shoe. You can walk barefoot. So it is like a normal human foot, it is flat. When you walk outdoor, you can wear a Hawaii chapel without any extra heel. Go outside, indoor, remove the footwear, or religious places, remove the footwear and walk. No change in alignment. And then when you walk, this is a western style, mostly hidden in shoes or a footwear. So the natural toe appearance is not there. But when you walk barefoot, natural toe appearance is the must. That is the second modification to do. One is external heel and then toe cosmetic appearance. And to prevent the moisture absorption, it is totally covered with a skin color resin or leather to give more cosmosis. And to prevent moisture absorption. That is called that. That is a modification over the satch foot is called the matras foot. Okay. And in Jaipur, for the same purpose of bad foot walking, they have developed another one foot called Jaipur foot. They have totally different concept, material use, and the technique, everything totally different concept they follow. This one. I will just show you the construction of that. So, this also consists of some of your field wood, which is above the level. The, all these things you can see at the same height. Okay, the western style. Here, they have put the field wood above the level of the ankle joint. <coughs> and underneath, the foot is made up of ordinary Hawaii chapel rubber. 
cheaper material which is available in the market. These are all expensive rubber. Okay. <coughs> the hind portion is bond, not bonded to relative to your action. The four midfoot and the forefoot made up of same amount of rubber that is bonded together to give more rigidity to the foot. All these structures are totally covered with the vulcanized rubber, the carpine material, you know, that material, that will not absorb moisture okay? and more strong also. And for additional strength, here what they use, there is a canvas pattern. Here the nylon thread is bound all around, you can see the fibers will become close. And that is wound all around for the additional strength. Okay. So all these wood, hidden wooden keel and the hawaii chapter rubber is all encast in a vulcanized rubber, carved iron material. Yes. So, though there is no joint here, this use at this junction, as if a hard pivot is resting on a soft surface you will be able to rotate the pivot in any direction. Okay. So like that function it used at this junction leading to plant production and obstruction, inversion, inversion and some amount of rotation. So all the three plane movements is possible in this junction though there is no joint. That is why they call this junction as an universal joint to do this action. <coughs> So the action wise and the range of motion is more than the western satch point. One advantage. Second, this facilitates bad foot walking because the same human foot mold is taken and the sub facilitates for bad foot walking. Second advantage. Third, totally moisture prevention. Because uh, this will not absorb the moisture. All the western variety, you, when you go into the watery area, it will absorb moisture and spoils. This they can go even into the field, water field or in paddy field, nothing will happen to the foot. So that, that is why the connecting techni technique also they are all shifted. Usually all these western stairs will have a connecting bolt at the bottom. Okay. Connecting bolt at the bottom. This they have changed into proximal bolting system. So that totally moisture prevent them. They can go even into the paddy field. Cost wise very very cheap, only 150 to 200 rupees. Whereas the western minimal cost is 1000. The energy storing for all at least minimum 50,000 to 1 lakh. Cost is there, but it gives a very good anatomical new angle moment. That's important. The technology has developed, if you can pay more, you can get a more. Okay, so that is about. Indian modifications of the varieties of foot components. Now I use the next lot of computation. Science and precision. This is a Canadian design science prosthesis. To allow the bulbous stump bend, there is an opening here on the medial wall. The bulbous stump bend will go inside and then this will be closed with the window. Separate window with a multiple stamping system. The same, a modified satch foot is used this year. Modified satch foot. Then the next level is Filoni amputation. <coughs> this is a standard typical model of the Filoni prosthesis, the major components of foot ankle assembly. So any type of foot ankle assembly which I have discussed here you can select depending upon the level of use and the economic condition of the patient, any variety you can select. Then this is for the shank, that is the distal to the stump and up to the ankle joint is called a shank. This is the socket where the stump will fit in. This is the suspension system. Okay. Four major factors. The shank, it can be pulled. So there are two designs out there. One is the exoskeletal design, this particular one. Centrally, it's a hollow. <coughs> through the outer peripheral wall, weight transmission. So inside, a plastic or a wood shell is there. Outside, is the polyester resin lam lamination is there. <coughs> to prevent moisture absorption. Okay. So reduce, reduce the weight centrally, material has been removed the hollow. This is the second one, endoskeletal socket technology. Instead of a hard one, centrally pipe like this and then outside covered with the 
form. I'll show you the ammonia section. So inside the pipe like this shank tube is there, outside covered with the O, the cosmetic O. So the advantage of this is all prefabricated. This is a custom made. Exoskeletal is a custom made. Now prefabricated modules and the different materials are being used. Steel, aluminium, and nowadays to go to the plastics, the latest is thermophyta composition again. Still make it reduce still weight. Those varieties are available for the shank tube. The advantage of this endoskeletal system is reduction in bleach. One is main advantage is reduction in bleach. That leads to less energy consumption. Patient can use it for a longer period, makes the process more lighter. Secondly, the modules, any one part goes out of condition, you can change only that module. Here, they have to change the entire process. Because it's a prefabricated modules, fabrication time also comes reduced. You can fit to the patient faster, readily available some models. But the only thing little like more expensive than the other side. Then the next part is the socket. Socket, there are various designs, one is the conventional, one is the non-total contact socket. From there, the improved version of total contact sockets have been developed. The advantage of the total contact socket is you have a more area of contact and a distributed load between the prevention of the pressure source. The main and the more area of contact leads to better proprioception and the better more mode of weight transmission. So this is the standard design of Petrova and Dunbarri total contact socket. You can see a protuberance here at the level of the particular tendon. So that takes the more load and the opposite to the particular tendon, there is a popular force of air also in the newer protuberance you can see. So those two to give a force at the level of the tendon and the counter force at the popular force to take more load at this point. And another uh, load taking is the medial tibial plateau. So these are the main three areas body load is being transmitted. Though it is having a total contact, in these areas force, con force concentration is more and the rest of the other areas like the, the sensitive areas, crust of the tibia, patella, end of the fibula and the stump end, though it is having a contact, but no absolute weight transmission. Weight transmission totally free. Only, thing, only in these areas may weight transmission. At all, and the popular cause of the medial tibial plateau. Other areas have no close contact only, no weight transmission. That is the petrol and the socket. So, this standard PTB, this is the upper brim. It will extend only half of the petal anteriorly. And just to cover the medial and lateral corner on the femoral corner, just to cover the medial and femoral corner. And posteriorly, it is reduced to a popular increase level to have any flux. So, this standard patella tendon bearing is suitable for medium stumps and ideal stumps and long stumps. When the stump length becomes sharp in short stumps, then the problem arises medial lateral instability and the leverage to control the processes. So what we can do? In those cases, we will increase the medial and lateral border. You can see the difference in this. This is the particular tendon group. The medial and lateral border of the socket will be raised well above the femoral contents and it will be shaped in, shaped in such a way so that the wedge is incorporated it will hold over the femoral contents. That itself will act like a suspension. There is no extra suspension like this. <coughs> the, this is for the total and then balance of total contact socket with the supracondylar wedge suspension. No strap. <coughs> this is suitable for short stones. When the stumps become still sharp, in such a case, the anterior border also will be raised, as in this case. And so the You can 
C, anterior part also will be raised over the pedal arm and there will be one more holding force over the pedal arm for suspension force. Okay. So that will give increased unilateral stability to the short stump. So why? Unilateral instability and to have a more area of contact in the short stump. To have a better control over the process. Okay. So where Short stumps again will lead to another complication of flexion contractures and valve assembly. So in those cases, very short stumps with the flexion contractures. So about 20 to 30 degree, by aligning the socket in the flexed position, we can find it. Okay. This is a straight, we can align the socket like this, this way, and then fabricate the rest of the process in the vertical condition. But beyond 30 degree, if the alignment will not be proper, then in that case, you will bend the knee to 90 degree. So, very transmission at the distal area, from the under the pedal arm and the custody area. And you will make a socket up to the tie section, incorporating an outside mechanical knee joints. So, the very short stump with the more of flexion deformity that can be managed with an external hinge and keeping that something 90 degree flexion for the So in that case, the socket should be open anteriorly in order to allow the bulk assay. Next, level of amputation is a bony amputation. So we are losing one more functional joint in the knee joint. This is a standard model of a abony prosthesis. The major components are foot ankle assembly, in this case a sand foot. This is called a shin or shank. In this case an exoskeletal design. Inside it is hollowed out to the peripheral wall line transmission. The new component is the knee joint. This is the socket and this is the suspension system. Okay. So as I told you, any foot ankle assembly you can select. Shank, if you have whether endoskeletal or exoskeletal, the knee joint. There are varieties of knee joints available. According to the axis one classification, single axis and polyaxial knee joints are available. And the friction, to have a better controlled swing pace, frictional devices are available. And that there are two, three variables. One is a constant friction knee joint. This particular one is the constant friction knee joint. What is the constant friction in our means? The entire swing phase, the friction created inside the joint will be same, constant throughout the swing phase. That is called the constant friction knee joint. The other variety, variable friction knee joint, the friction inside the joint will automatically vary. Now, at the initial spin and the terminal spin, the friction inside the joint will automatically increase due to the Hydraulic mechanism or a pneumatic mechanism, friction variable, variable friction through the swing phase. So, hydraulic friction and pneumatic frictional devices are also available to make the swing phase more natural. This is a constant friction knee joint, the swing phase may not be near normal. Maybe at one speed, when the particular cannon, the swing phase may be looking normal like an anatomical function. But when you want slower, faster, constant friction will give a asymmetrical gauge. So when you go for a variable friction knee joint, the swing phase control will be near normal or near anatomical. That is the advantage of the variable friction joints, but those things are expensive. Then now only the joint comes to 20 to 30,000 rupees. So very recently, even computerized dollar knee joints also available. There is a mini chip. So when the amputee walks, within five steps, it will sense it at what speed is going to walk. Accordingly, it will adjust the friction in the knee joint so that at any given speed, it will give a near natural gauge. 
the only thing the joint that cost only two lakhs. <laughs> so if you can you to pay the money, the technology has developed so much, you can have a near natural gate. Okay. The next part is socket. The socket, the one that is very commonly used to improve technology today, quadrilateral total contact plastic socket. Quadrilateral total contact plastic socket. Why it is made into a quadrilateral? The normal shape is an oval shape. You see the upper type, etc. It's an oval shape. That is transformed into a quadrilateral shape for two specific reasons. One is to have a better effective weight transmission. The force application under the scale viscosity that makes the weight transmission more effective and that will have a counter force in the anterior wall, the star femoral triangle, the force and the counter force. The medial wall, this is medial wall and the posterior wall is about 90 degree angulation. Anterior wall on the lateral wall is curved slightly. Okay. So there are pressure relief. This corner will have a relief for the adductor of the skeleton. Here there is a relief for the rectus femoris muscle. The posterior lateral wall will have a gluteus, medius and minimus relief and the posterior medially will have a hamstring relief. So those the quadrilateral shape and giving relief for the muscles, muscle, different muscle groups. So the quadrilateral shape it makes the effective weight transmission and gives a proper relief for the muscles to act. That is the advantage of the quadrilateral shape. And then the quadrilateral shape will prevent the rotation of the prosthesis rotation of the socket with respect to the soft tissues. Normally if it is around very easily it can rotate. <coughs> what I have to say to prevent the rotation of the processes. Two main mechanical advantages in the quadrilateral shape. And then suspension system, the last part. There are metal <coughs> joints with the pellet take the sample that will allow only knee flexion and extension only will not allow abduction or action. This is the one very generally used the flexible suspension technologies for the silage and damage. Okay. This gives very good flexible attachment yet allows all the movements of the hip joint allow flexion extension, abduction and action, circumduction, all movement of the hip joint will allow yet be an effective suspension system. The still more effective suspension system you can go for suction suspension. Okay. There will be a wall placed at the anterior distal end of the stump end wall. That wall will allow air from inside to outside only. From outside to inside it will not allow. So the total contact socket I told you, when you are inserting the stump into the socket, the air inside the socket will be driven out. Through the hole. Then it will be closed to the wall. So after closing, as I told you, air cannot enter from this side. Approximately it is all closed with the soft tissues. Okay. So inside the socket, it creates a negative pressure between the inner wall of the socket and the soft tissues. So unless you remove the wall, air cannot have any entry to go inside. Only after removal of that, wall, you will be able to remove the stop. Otherwise, it creates a maximum pressure, negative pressure inside the socket and the soft tissues. So, that gives the facts like a suspension. No extra bulk like this. So, the advantage of the suction is, the patient will have a feeling of, as if the process is fitted to the body, is a part of the amputated stump. You will have the feeling so confident, so that increases the confidence, better control over the processes, better progress section because the first will contact over the stuff. The only thing is to be a more expensive technique. And the amputee has to maintain his weight constant. If he reduces or loses his weight, then the suction will not work properly. Okay. And uh, so using a suction technique, the weight of the process has to be minimized as much as possible. So you have to go for an industrial technology by using carbon fiber composite sheet
or the technique also. Reduce the pressure so that then only the extraction will work. So with that, I come to the end of the lower extremity prosthesis. So with the recently available technology, we can rehabilitate an empty or the eight and make them near normal as now I store to the upper extremity. Replacing all these spinal functions, still we have a problem. So let me explain to you what are what the facilities are available. You have the amputation, the minimal amputation, amputation of the one finger or one carrot. No functional replacement is possible, only cosmetic replacement with the help of the upper glove. Okay, we have different colors, there are about 18 shades are available to suit the different individual. Select the appropriate color and then any one finger, cut the fix it to a cap line. Okay. You give a inside a filling with any soft material. Oh. You give the cosmetic replacement, no function. Okay. Once the entire finger, the two finger or three finger is lost, full gloves can be put inside by opening the whatever the existing fingers. So that that will give a near natural feeling, but they are also only cosmetic replacement, no function. So when the thumb is last, the thumb constitutes around 60% of the hand function. So in that case, inside the cosmetic glove, in a functional position, we can fix a rigid thumb in a functional position. So with respect to the thumb, we can bring the index and middle finger and have some prehension force. The same way, index and middle finger is lost. Inside the cosmetic cloud, we can fix a rigid index and middle finger in a functional position so that with respect to them, we can take the thumb and have some reaction. It is possible. So when the next level of amputation is losing entire the hand, then the terminal device is the same part. So the terminal device, there are some varieties. This is called a mechanical hand. We have the three fingers will open. The cable will open. Three fingers simultaneously, not individually. All the three fingers will open same time simultaneously and then close the same time. Okay. So here you can hold a pen for writing, you can hold a comb for combing, you can hold a buttoning activities. So activities are daily living, that is only possible in this. You can hold a spoon for feeding, that too the spoon needs a little bigger handle, ordinary handle, it can slip off. <coughs> so here there are two varieties, one is a voluntary opening in this one. The opening control is under the voluntary control of the amputee is called a voluntary opening. There is another one more hand, the hand will be always in an open position. So the same cable will operate this also, once the same opening it will close the fingers. So the difference between these two is, here the prehensile force is constant. Here the prehensile force varies according to the size and texture of the object. And we can differentiate the prehensile force. That is the functional advantage. There's another one more terminal device is the hook. Cosmetically, it may not look nice. Only three fingers, index and middle finger, and this is the thumb. The same cable will operate this also. You can attach this and fix this one there. Here the hand moves on the side wheel. The two fingers move on the side wheels. Now, though cosmetically it is not looking well, but functionally reaching the object, it can do it very fast. So small, small and uh, functioning work, shifting here and there, they can do it very faster than the mechanical. So such type of advantage is in there, though cosmetically not very well. So let's pull the cable to the other end. No, I'll tell you, I'll come last, how to operate this. Then one more thing is a passive hand, where the function is not necessary, only cosmetic hand, passive hand. One more hand is there, here we have both, all the five figures will open and close simultaneously, not individually. Mainly the grasp is obtained by the three fingers only. The remaining two is only for the knee, super so additional. 
If I told you, you can call it a spoon for feeding purposes. But the ordinary spoon normally will stick. <coughs> you need a little bigger handle. Always bigger handle spoons may not be available. So to facilitate that, you have one more type of device. An angular spoon with a thread. So you can glue this hand in feeding time. Fix this at the terminal. So that will lead to the reduced forearm length. Reduced forearm length and the angle of that. So easily you can feed it. This needs an extensive elbow function if you are using a mechanical hand with a spoon. So in this, because of the angulation, the firm fixation, spoon will not split and reduce the angulation, easy feeding. And if the amputee is a lady involving in kitchen activities, there is a knife with a thread. <laughs> Elbow flexion and the terminal device 
cable, this long cable. There's another one more small cable is there that is to operate the elbow joint. This elbow joint it will have only flexion and extension. <coughs> the internal or external rotation can be manually adjusted at this tension. And the elbow joint can be locked at different positions. Then the, to lock that, there is an elbow locking cable is here. One pull, it will lock the elbow joint. The next pull, it will unlock and go back to the external position. So the gravity will come down. So at different positions, this can be locked. The level positions, to have a different operational level, you can lock the elbow joint. Now, how to operate this? Terminal device and above elbow entity. It is very complicated, it is not so as easy in the below elbow. Below elbow, we have the elbow control. <coughs> we, are we are losing the elbow joint also. So we have to stabilize the elbow joint first. Get the optimal position of the elbow flexion. And then you have to lock it. You have to stabilize the elbow joint in order to operate the terminal device. So first step is to flex the elbow, second step is to lock the elbow and then operation of the terminal device. So how to perform this? First the initial elbow flexion can be applied by this, I assume my right hand is not okay. Initial shoulder flexion will lead to elbow coming here, which I am holding it, pulling from the takes to the elbow flexion. All these things you have to pull the cable. Pull the cable by muscle act. Shoulder flexion will lead to elbow flexion. Then you have to lock it. The locking, you can pull this lever manually. That is, in order to operate the lock, we are losing the functions of the normal hand also. It's only on emergency case you can put it manually. But other times, Preferably, you have to do it with the muscle functions only. Oh. So, this will be connected to the anterior support strap to the elastic. Okay. So, after getting the shoulder flexion, it will lead to elbow in a flexed position. Then, you have to initiate abduction of the shoulder, external rotation, and then finally extension of the shoulder, the same amputated side. So, in that, during that motion, the elastic will pull this lever, pull this cable. So I told you it has to pull and release. So from that position you have to come back fast. You have seen the reverse sequence of pattern. So that the spring will loose and then it will go into locking position. Then after locking, you have to operate the terminal device. It needs additional force, shoulder flexion, and then bicep lock flexion. For the moment, you have to simultaneously you have to do it to operate the terminal device. So this is not an easy job. Even for the normal persons, to have such an extensive body motion, sometimes it is difficult. So amputees, in order to use the terminal device, they have to use a very extensive force. The proximal joints has to be full and free with good musculature. So without that, whatever the good process is being provided, the amputee will not be able to use it. So most of the time, because of this problem only, they use it only for cosmetic purpose. Functionally, they don't use because, as I told you, the cable, it has to travel about. But to have the elbow flexion, 9.8 cm it has to travel. And to have the terminal device operation, totally 11.3 cm the cable has to travel. So 11.3 cable travel needs an extensive body motion that to be a powerful musculature. Without that, they will not be able to do the terminal device operation. That is why most of the amputees, they use only for cosmetic. Now we may ask a question. When a robot can do all sorts of functions, why don't we incorporate the technology here? So that is will do tomorrow. So that only initially, myoelectric hands only developed. Myoelectric form, that is the inside of motor is fixed, electrically assisted one. You know, every muscle, the Isometric contraction, small amount of electricity is produced. So we will place a surface electrode in the socket. Ask the patient to do the isometric contraction. That the potential is tapped by the surface electrode and is amplified through a relay system which is fixed in the forearm. 
and then amplified power which is applied to the fan to operate the hand in one direction. Another signal has to be selected for the closing of the hand. Only for that. If you want to elbow, two more signals has to be selected. So all those things controlling everything you have to do the by muscle action. We can, of course, by electrical assisted, we can do this function instead of a mechanical function here, it can be electrical assisted one. But that's very, very expensive. It comes a below elbow about 4.5 lakh, in above elbow it comes to 10 to 11 lakhs, the person scenario. Even after spending that much, what we could achieve is only instead of a mechanical function, it's an electrical assisted one. So then here comes the question why don't you incorporate a robot? But the robot, <coughs> though it is doing all the functions, it is being operated by a normal person from outside. He is having all the control, he is operating the switches and the robot has to jump. Here, after has to carry the power, carry the control for each movement, that becomes the thing. So, a lot of research is going on, hope in future, you may be able to achieve some more improvement. Now, we have the lower most condition is the controlling of the ankle and foot. So, for that, the conventional design ankle foot or causes consisting of a boot, an orthopedic special aid type of boot and the stirrup is an ankle joint which will perform the ankle motion, medial lateral uprights, and the calf band. Maximal T strap to control the virus or virus. So stirrup, there are three or four varieties are available. One is a solid stirrup where the shoe makes a permanent fixation to the plate. In this case, the next one is a split stirrup. The stirrup can be made into three parts. You can remove the shoe from the stirrup. So this facilitates interchange of shoes and the donning, doffing and donning made easy. You can grab the shoes and then insert the opposites. That is the advantage of the, this stirrup system, split stirrup system. Then the next component is ankle joint. There are five varieties of ankle joints available. One is a free motion ankle joint. That is indicated when the ankle is middle lateral stability and the particle of power is there. So we need not to arrest the movement of the ankle joint go up free. Then the question comes why do you need an ankle joint? That the mostly is for virus or virus control. That time the medial strap, T strap will be used to control the virus or virus. The next one is fixed ankle joint. That will be mainly used when there is a pathological fracture and the weight relieving character. Instead of normal load transmission, the patellar PTB socket I told you that will be fixed here. So through the PTB socket, through the operates on the loading for the pathological fracture of the uh, tibia or the yes. Then the limited motion ankle joint. That will be used for where both the muscle group are being. Play like Then, for the four front of flexion stop ankle joint is for foot drop. Then, the calcaneal drop, that is a last flexion stop ankle joint. Our varieties are but depending upon the condition you can go for. The medial and lateral uprights, this is the calf band. You can go for a metal or plastic, design the calf band. So, this uh, level is uh, 2 cm below the level of the head of the fibula we have to check whether it is a properly given or not, or it should not create any problem of the common This one, it aligns the ankle and foot in a proper alignment, controls the middle lateral stability of the ankle joint, is a controlled <coughs> Functionally, it's good, no doubt. But, patients will feel it heavy. Already weakened limb, we are adding weight to that, Okay. And then the more maintenance, the leather boot is especially made, you cannot get the repair it done outside. Moisture it spoils very soon. Joints it needs oiling now and then, otherwise it will darken, fix, and then there is no movement. 
properly on this. Or it stains the problem. Okay, these are also some of the disadvantages of the conventional metal design. So we are switching over to the plastic design only. So this is also doing the same function as that uh, thing. Made up of thermoplastic polypropylene. You take a mold and then nowadays it's a prefabricated that also is available. Okay. So this main thing is to put in the plastic grade position. Where middle level stability you want, bring the brim line anterior to the malleoli so that it's a more or less a static stage. Use very good middle level stability. So where you have the middle level stability, you can allow the elbow to an anti joint movement, you can go for the narrowing of the top muscles here. See that? So here the brim line is posterior to the malleoli. That makes more narrow cups than here allows for the action, but it will have a reduced control over the medial lateral stability. It allows the action, but reduced control of the medial lateral stability. So if you want more medial lateral stability, you can go for anterior to the manual line. If you want to reduce the medial lateral stability, but allow the action, you can go for this. The latest improvements does not provide the joints, and we can provide an ankle joint here. So all these five types, you can have a limited motion angle joint there, you can have a plantar flexion stop angle joint, you can have a reverse for reverse and for tightening the things, the calcarium and prop also it's possible, although when it is in plastic also it's possible now. Next is knee and tilt foot top process. K A O K A for this K A for the knee. The major components are shoe or a boot, stirrup, ankle joint, middle and lateral upright, a calf band. Here the new component is the knee joint, the knee cap, mid thigh band, the scale band. So up to here it's the same like ankle foot on process only. The new component is the knee cap and the knee joint. We have some varieties of knee joints. This is the one very commonly used, the drop lock knee joint. Give some both sides. So while extending the knee due to its self weight, it will drop and lock it. That is why it is called a drop lock knee joint. Another variety is half set knee joint. See here. This is the axis of the knee joint that is along the line of the weight transmission. Knee axis along the line of the weight transition. See the other variety. Here the uh, axis of the knee joint is shifted posteriorly. Beyond posterior to the vehicle. This is the same upright. So come in this direction. So here the mechanical axis is shifted posterior to the weight line, anatomical weight line. That makes and the knee joint <coughs> locked, stabilized. There is no extra lock. No, it's so the advantage of this, the patient will be, this will have a stiff knee gait. This will have an ankle, the normal swing you can have. That is the advantage of this offset knee joint. You need not to unlock while for the sitting and then lock it while walking. As in the case of drop lock, that is not necessary. In this, you can go and sit down and then stand and walk. But the minimum criteria. The cordyceps power should be 3 and above. Some amount of active extension necessary to go over a half set knee. In all the cases, a totally flail knee, you cannot go for an half set knee. The another advantage is one is that no mechanical law, and secondly, the stump, sorry, the knee joint is activated every step so that the muscle power will improve. Slowly. So from 3 to 3 plus and 4, sometimes 4 plus also is possible. In that case, once you stabilize the knee joint with the 4 plus, you can discard, remove the KAFO, come down to you can use it that only AFO is possible. That is the advantage of the offset knee joint. Then one more French lock knee joint is there for uh, to help the bilateral involvement. That means uh, now the unilateral. You can use your both hands to unlock it and then make that. 
complex. At least the bilateral involvement, so once, uh, once you operate on one side and you take your hand to the opposite the next side, you do to yourself like you drop on lock. So how to operate all the four channel joints simultaneously or easy method. But to help that only the French bomb or switch lock will help. That is the medial or lateral component of the thing if you are connected to the U-shaped band. Medial or lateral will be connected together with the U-shaped band. That is connected to an elastic through the compound, fixed to the compound. So you can use both the hands, lift the lever, like this, lift the lever. So all the four joints should simultaneously go into an unlock position, you will be able to sit down. Okay, to lock it with the table support, make the patient to extend the knee. <coughs> the elastic fixed to the lever, it will pull down. You need not to push the lever down. The elastic will pull the lever down, all the pole will go into locking position. <coughs> so that is very, very helpful for bilateral involvement for, for making more of the independence. So the advantages and disadvantages, as I told you, is an anchor for top is there also. It stabilizes and aligns that knee and the ankle in a proper alignment. Now, okay. Question is more of maintenance. More weight is more, more expensive, and the cost of all is more than that. That is why nowadays even KF also we are switching over to the plastic design. Okay. Only the knee joint is taken, <coughs> so the rest of the lower portion switching to the ankle foot of The upper metal bands also are removed in the plastic PP. Okay, only the drop lock we can So it is a plastic cum metal design. The idea is to make it more lighter, cost wise it is cheaper and is having a more close contact with the body. So better effective control than the metal design. Reduction in weight, cost wise it is reduced. Then the other one, totally plastic design called flow reaction of causes or supracondal arthritis made up of polypropylene. The original design was made up of carbon fiber composites that is very very expensive. So in India we make in the uh, polypropylene. This doesn't have an ankle joint, no knee joint. It is made up of a single thermoplastic sheet having the part like a full plate. This is the top shell. This is the sopranal gland. From here it goes under the foot, goes behind the calf muscle. From here, due to the construction, it crosses anteriorly <coughs> knee joint and then extends up to the <coughs> So there is an important change of biomechanics in this. The load, the body load is transmitted along this approach. Downward approach. The opposite ground reaction force at the heel level, which is directly opposite to the downward force. Both are collinear forces. Downward force and the opposite ground reaction force are collinear forces in this case. But here, ankle is fixed 15 degree plantar flexion. What is the The ankle is 15 degree plantar flexion. So only the forefoot will touch the ground. Heel will be off the ground. The loading, the counter force, the body load will act in this direction. Counter force it will act on the four foot level. Ground reaction force at the four foot level, not along the same line. So these two non collinear forces will create a momentum. <coughs> Carter create a momentum. The momentum passes through the top foot plate and the top cell. It comes in front of the knee joint because of the construction and pushes the knee back. See that. I'm holding only. In this and that acts on the knee joint, which will stabilize the knee. <coughs> so the, as I told you, the plastic, all the other advantages are there. Very, very light in weight. Very close fit over the body. So more precise control of forces. So you can need not to have any shoes, special shoes like this. Any commercially available shoe is fitting. Then you can change the shoe. 
you can fully wash it, very less maintenance. Here you cannot go for washing it. The only disadvantage is the midday band is protruding up to the up to the knee. So when you sit down, you should protrude over the trousers. Cosmetically not acceptable. That is only the disadvantage. That can be minimized by reducing the size of the supraponderal band just above the knee joint. But that will increase the unit pressure on the soft tissues. Now the ground reaction force is controlled on a larger area. When you reduce the size of the band, unit pressure will increase. That may lift your pressure source in due course. So that can be modified a lot if you can provide the knee joint, top lock knee joint to provide it here. So when you want to sit down, remove the lock and then it will come and flush with the body. It is possible. But only thing, the ground reaction force, every time when you are walking, it will act on the knee joint, the breakage of the joint will be very high. So if you are tolerant, that you can go for that modification also. Congenital serial plastic and all to bring it to the neutral position. So, after neutral, we maintain the correction by using a Davis Brown split. It's having a two boot and with a spreader bar. So, to control the other three deformities, to not to follow up again, this is called an ankle strap. Into the slot, insert the baby foot inside, and then this pull over this the maximum possible so that that corrects the equinus fully and then anchor it with the button. So, to check whether the equinus is fully connected or not, there is a pin hole behind, check the heel whether it is touching that sole or not. The equinus is fully connected or not, can be checked one equinus and the varus. To cut the virus, there is an internal uh, lateral heel and sole which is provided with the sole that keeps the foot in inverted position. Further, severe cases, it can be still controlled by bending this upright to take it to a more inverted position. That control also is possible. Third, no heel is provided to the equinus again, and the forefoot adduction, medial foot will be more stiff. So, to prevent the forefoot going on here. Position. In severe cases, it can provide a metal plate also here, so that the prevent the perfect protection. When the child starts walking, then we will show the Dennis Brown shoes, having all the maintenance, same, the all the three forces, it does not have the heel, so that to prevent the further any excessive foot is going with the plant protection. The lateral heel and sole. Which is already in contact, you have to keep the foot in more rewarded position. And the forefoot, if you see that, it will be more stiff, so that even forcible uh, adduction also is not possible. That is the special thing. There is no sush. So this is for congenital dislocation of hip. There is the function of the ZB splint for hip, or CDH splint, consisting of a Another pelvic band, two uprights, and then two thigh band. So, this maintains the hip in about 40 to 40 degree abduction and 10 to 20 degree hip rush. Hmm? And same again from the sternal pad, there is a U shaped, inverted U shaped band connected to the oxygen band and two shoulder girdles and connecting straps. So, this is a readily available market, but it needs skill to fit to the individual. All those things it has to be shaped and adjusted according to the individual. Then only it will hold the position. So, this prevents all the more subvectal movements, flexion, extension lateral flexion including rotation. It's about 70 to 80 percent is left. Even forcible movements is possible in this. To make it more simplified, another one more color also is available in the ready market called Philadelphia color. So instead of a 
adjusting to the individual, all those things are prefabricated in a pre molded shape. This also can hold the same position about 60 to 70 percent restriction for a prefabricated molded design. It is. So, where you want to go for a year 100 percent immobilization, then you have to go for customized one. In a thermoplastic, anterior and posterior two cells, you have to take a POP cast and then duplicate with thermoplastic and connect it with a strapping system. So, individual custom made. So, this means more near 100% immobilization of the cervical, all the bonus of the cervical spine. Flexible support, fabric, <coughs> these also nowadays many designs are available in the market. But a posteriorly a supportive metal support is there, shaped according to the heart temperature. This will adjust according to the individual patient and then fit inside. The lateral supports are flexible struts are there inside thermoplastic flexible struts. We have adjustable velcro fasteners to where different sizes are available. Nice spinal trays. There is a metal or a plastic frame inside padded with the foam and then anteriorly only posterior rigid support, anteriorly the flexible support. So depending upon the reason you can extend up this. This is the pelvic band, this is not the two posterior upright, thoracic band and two lateral upright. Till and I, TK brace. TK brace, no? Till and I. This means the lumbar sacral area prevents flexion extension and reduction. So when include rotation, this will not have any control. You have to control the rotation also, you have to connect it to the tailor's <coughs> So another one is the anterior wet compression fractures. For the marina is called the ash brace, anterior sternal hyperextension brace or cast brace. This is also readily available in the market. As in the case of Romy brace, this also needs individual skill to fit to the individual. All these upgrades can be adjustable. The starting system also. So this starts on three point principles, two anterior pores by the sternal pad and the pubic pad and one middle pores by the posterior support. So this also available in the market readily. The only thing with your due to its self weight, though it keep, maintains the spine in hyperextension, due to its self weight sometimes it may slip down. You may have to provide some additional strapping for our case. For, for the same purpose of modified jewel place. Modified jewel place. Here, Nothing, the, all the same four pads is all united together in a molded design, supported by the jewet frame. So, the original the jewet frame, only the frame will be there, and these four pads will be fixed sternal pad, PV pad, and the two lateral pads. Okay, that is the jewet brace. Imagine only the frame, with that the four pads. <coughs> all the four pads will be one is sternal pad, PV pad, two lateral pads and the posterior component, corrective pads. But here, what we do is, we take a mold and then incorporate a shell along with the jewel face. That is the modified jewel face. The advantage in this, you have a very close fit over the body. It does not slip down to the step way because of the molded no more family area contacts. More effective control over the walking brace consisting of a pelvic girdle, one anterior upright, adjustable upright, and two posterior uprights. All these uprights are connected to the cranial support. This is the chin support, this is the hospital support. You can open and then fit it to the patient and then give the traction. This also acts as a three point per second The cranial support gives an upward traction. The pelvic girdle gives a downward traction and this is the posterior hump pad, this gives a posterior lateral force, the correcting force. So 
this is the brace to be worn 24 hours a day for a better control and correction. Having a you know, metal band, some of these four things, your thermoplastic thing, cosmetically is not <coughs> very well accepted. And these are continuous traction over the chin lead to protrusion of the teeth in your pores. That is another disadvantage. And whatever we cover it with the cloth, cosmetically it is visible outside. That is why most of the thing of patients they don't like these things. So here also we are thinking about the another one place for the modified most and brains. So what we do here, <coughs> totally the chin support is eliminated. The biomechanical concept is reversed. We make the brace, fit it to the patient and then apply the three forces to correct the deformity. Upward force and downward force and the correct force. Here, first itself we apply all the three corrective forces. That is, through a decent sling, give the upward traction. The body load will act like a downward force. The scoliotic curve the maximum possible. So, the patient will be more or less in the hanging <coughs> position with the maximum correction. That time, you take a cast and then duplicate the thermoplastic with all the still corrective forces in the face. So, it is a Cambridge. single thermoplastic brace. Open it, the posterior wall, open it, close them. Does not have the chin support, there is no person of proportion of the chin. It is very close fit over the body, so cosmetically it is very well accepted. Does not visible over the clothing. More area of contact give a precise control of forces and comfort also. Cost wise also it is cheaper than that. 